This video is on object-oriented programming. This is an introductory course, so it's going to be the first one. So right here we're just going to make a program where we're going to have a very simple uh, display. Uh, first you open up uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express. That's the one I'm currently using. So in order to begin, let's click right here on New Project. Then we're going to go down to Win32 Console Application, select it, and uh, then you're going to enter in a name here for the program. Uh, let's just call this um, New Program. We're going to get a program for beginners. Uh, let's just call it Beginner. Beginner. Let's click OK. <coughs> uh, then just click Finish. You don't need to go through, just click finish. Uh, now we'll wait a bit. My computer is going to take a few seconds to populate this, but bear with me. So here is, it's going to come up with this screen. Uh, initially we don't need a lot of this stuff, so you can just go ahead and delete it. I'm deleting it just to clean up everything so it, uh, it so it's just so it's cleaner. So you want to leave that. Okay. So now we're starting with a clean slate. Uh, except for uh, pound side, it include uh, double quotes, std, afx, dot, h, uh, double quotes. So but actually before I get into that one, let's first start off with the with these symbols right here. We're going to be using several symbols. So this forward slash, the double forward slash, uh, when you use that, that actually stands for comments. And that allows you to, it just allows you to, uh, to write notes, write notes for yourself. Okay, so the next thing I, I want you to, to tell you about, well, let's see. So we're going to use the forward slash so let's say pound include. Let's teach you about that real quick. Let me put my pound button. Uh, pound include. So what pound include? It just it tells C plus plus that you want it to include whatever comes next. So let's see. So now, for instance, here we have pound include, and then we have double quotes std afx dot h uh, double quotes. So you might be wondering, well, what does that stand for? So let's see. Here is pound include uh, double quotes. You have to use double quotes, by the way. Std afx dot h double quotes. Uh, and for this one, it's it's just for using a precompiled uh, for precompiled headers, and you know you don't really need to use this if uh, you shouldn't use it if if you can enter in your own required system headers. So if you can do that, then don't enter in, don't use this. But for now, we will use it, especially since you guys are beginners. Uh, so for using pre. Uh, Compiled headers. So now we're going to enter in a second one. This is going to be pound include. Now we're going to use this symbol, uh, which that's the less than symbol, and IO stream. So let's explain the the less than symbol. And that's just a symbol you're going to use to to enter in information. You're just it just opens and closes. It says whatever is in within these two uh, let's see less than. What's in between the, the less than and well and then we're gonna have the greater than. So and this is greater than greater than. And you're gonna use those two to to encapsulate what's ever in here and that's what you're telling C that you want to include. So let's see. So so far we have pound include Oh wait a minute. Uh, pound include tells you what's okay. That's correct. Inclu pound include tells precompilers. That's correct. So now we got the 
less than and greater than symbol. And then you know what IO streams. Oh, so that's just for the inputting and outputting of data. So, uh, oh no, no, no. Uh, IO stream is actually a library and it, and it tells you about different uh, commands that are already pre populated. So, for instance, uh, we're going to use C out, which is actually inside of the, the library of IO stream. So this the C out is just uh, it just prints uh, prints out slash displays uh, data data characters numbers symbols <clears throat> that's really all that's what it can do. So now let's see. So now let's use C out. So you just when you first bring down uh, you bring it right there the cursor just click right here where I did. So it's right there, and then just press enter, then it's going to automatically indent it for you. So it looks neat. So you're going to press C out. Um, then you're going to do less than, less than, double quotes. And then here's where you put whatever you want it to put in there. So I'm going to say, I like to move it, move it. Oops. So I like to move it, move it. All right, cool. So we're going to enclose that. And you're going to use semicolon to close it off. So uh, let's see. See how we already covered that. The double quotes, less than, less than. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, sure. So now, in order to come, after you finish off what you wanted to do, you have to compile it. So in order to compile, you're actually going to press uh, F. Oops, F7. And F7 just uh, tells C plus plus to compile compile your data or not your data your code okay so after you press oh, so I'm gonna press F7 right now and as soon as I press that it's gonna go ahead and start compiling and it's gonna show you what it's doing down here if I did everything in here correctly which I didn't then I see what I forgot uh, after you do that down here it's gonna it'll tell you what's going on and it's gonna find an error right now you'll see it right now undeclared identifier and so in order to fix that we actually have to add a couple more things so let's go back over here let's say pound include now we're gonna use man uh, no it's io man ip okay so IO manip. Now what does that do? IO manip. So IO manip that is used for manipulating and formatting output. So it's used for manipulating uh, for manipulating slash formatting uh, output. Output. That's one word. So, okay, so that's what IO manip is for. So that's what we have this one for. So let's see, after that, now we also need, uh, we need this. We're going to say using namespace, using namespace std, it allows you to group a set of global classes, objects, and functions. And, and that's basically it. So we're going to go ahead and compile this. So I'm pressing F7 now. And now it's going to start to go through this. It's going to start to debug the code. If if this code works, then um, uh, it'll tell us down here that you know the, the process completed and there's zero failures. So we just have to wait a little bit for it to go through. And then, oh, you know what? I also need to show you another command. and I want to put it right here. So forward slash uh, this is Control plus um, F5. And this command tells C to run your code. And now we're ready. So now, <clears throat> here I went through it, uh, tested it out, and it's saying it built it, saying it succeeded, none of it failed, so we're good. So now, I want to run this. And the way I run it is I press control F5. So I hold down control and I press F5. And now it's going to run it. What? 
Yes, I'd like to build it. Oh, you know, I it did that because I added uh, this text right here. Yeah, if I hadn't added it, it would have run. So it's gonna do this one more time, and then it'll, and then it'll run. So now you notice when when this prints out, it says I like to move it, move it. But it <clears throat> after it says it, I get this press any key to continue, and I don't want this here. So let's go ahead and press any key. Doesn't matter which one. Press any key now. I'm going to introduce you to a new command. So, and this one is uh, backslash n, backslash n. And what this one tells you, it uh, it tells C plus plus to move to the next line. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to put I'm going to put it right here, backslash n. And this is going to move down the, the code by one line. In fact, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to press F7 so it compiles it. And then we just have to wait for it. Well, the one succeeded, zero failed. Now let's go ahead and run this. Control F5. And voila. See, I like to move it, move it, and press any key to continue is down one space. So let's press. Uh, anything and we just did so now what do you think will happen if I press if I put backslash n again so if I put it backslash n once backslash n twice and let's see in fact yeah let's go ahead and run that so let's really compile it's compiling right now it's finished now let's compile this oh no I mean not compile let's run it so control f5 and voila look we said I like to move it, move it. It's right there. I like to move it, move it. Backslash n, it goes down one line. Then a second backslash n, now it goes down a second line. So now, uh, press any button. Now, let's add some spaces here. What do you think happens when I add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces there? And I want to do, oh uh, wait, no, not there. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do backslash n right here, and we're going to see what it does. When I have a backslash, I, so I did five spaces, and I did backslash n here. So let's see what it does. So let's compile F7. So now let's see what this looks like. Control F5. Oh, look. I did uh, five spaces. So that doesn't seem to, that didn't seem to do anything, did it? And I put the backslash n right there. So it moved it down one space, and then it wrote it, then it put it then it moved it down two more spaces. So let's press any key and now let's see what happens when I change this slightly. So now instead of putting that backslash n right next to the i, I'm going to put it right here, backslash n. So now let's see what it looks like. Control F7. And we're just going to wait for a bit. Control F5 now. So as you can see, it matters very much where you put that uh, backslash n. If I put the backslash n right away, immediately the first thing that uh, C++ is going to do is it's going to move down one line. And then, after that, it's going to make five spaces, which, there we got five spaces. And then it's going to print this out, and then it's going to move down one space and two space. So the order in which you enter in data into the line matters, because if you put the control in right here, right away, it's, that's the very first thing it's going to do, and move it down one space. If I would have put this right here, right in between two and move it, it would have actually said I like to and then move it would have been down here. So it matters where you put the backslash n. And you know, every black slash backslash n will make it move down once. And if you put two, it'll make it down move once, twice. If I would have put a thousand backslash n's, it would have made it move down a thousand times. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope it made some sense and I hope it helped you out. So good luck in your programming classes and uh, I'll see you later.